Sanctions have been one of the West's biggest weapons to punish Russia for invading Ukraine. But there's concern that Iran could teach the Kremlin how to dodge those sanctions and ease the economic pain. Some Iran experts wrote an opinion piece for The Wall Street Journal, and in it they warned that Iran's sanctions evasion techniques are sophisticated and sweeping, and that Tehran could teach Moscow how to replicate this illicit financial architecture or serve as the Kremlin's broker, taking a cut of the covert trade that it facilitates on Russia's behalf. Mark Dubowitz is a co-author of the piece, the CEO of the Foundation for Defense of Democracies, a think tank that has advocated for tougher sanctions on Iran. Uh, Mark, good to have you tonight. I guess, wh what do you think Iran, after all this time, could possibly offer? Well, Carl, the regime in Iran is really a world champion after many years in evading sanctions and in engaging in money laundering. So they've set up this clandestine sanctions-busting money laundering architecture, and they have a system that they can make available to their close ally, Vladimir Putin, who, as you know, is under punishing sanctions because of his invasion of Ukraine. So the Iranians are standing by to ha have this architecture available to Putin so he can move tens of billions of dollars and circumvent U.S. and Western sanctions. Um, what does the West need to do to keep this from happening? And wouldn't this sort of undo whatever progress we appear to be making in an Iran nuclear deal? Well, it certainly would. I mean, President Biden is poised to re-enter the deal that President Trump withdrew from in 2018. And in doing so, he's going to be withdrawing sanctions, including on Iran's central bank, which President Trump designated for supporting terrorism in 2019. And so you have a situation where Iran is going to shake free of these sanctions, but in doing so, it can it can really do a favor for its uh, a Russian ally in allowing Russian banks and Russian energy companies to plug back into the financial and energy system through Iranian entities. And that's certainly something everybody's concerned about. How would you describe the differences uh, in economic pressure the two economies have come under? Because obviously Russia is much larger, although they are both very reliant on oil. Um, are they even anywhere in the same ballpark? I would say probably not yet. I mean, the sanctions on the sanctions dial, if you say zero to 10 in Iran, probably we got to seven or eight. On Russia, sanctions were at four to five. I mean, there's so much more we can do. The Russian economy is about four times bigger than the Iranian economy. Um, but we really kicked off most Iranian banks from the SWIFT financial messaging system. We reduced their oil sales from two and a half million barrels a day to a couple hundred thousand. On the Russian side, there's still Russian banks on SWIFT. And the Russians are still selling their oil and natural gas to the Europeans and the Asians. So we're not even close to putting the kind of pressure on Russia that we put on Iran. Finally, uh, your piece argues that Congress, there's more white space for them to get active. What do you mean by that? Well, Congress really needs to monitor this because if Iranian banks, including the central bank, are engaged in sanctions busting on behalf of Russia, Congress needs to legislate and impose sanctions back on Iran for, for evading these sanctions. We're never going to stop Vladimir Putin's aggression in Ukraine and in the rest of Europe unless we, we put in place an airtight sanctions regime. And the key to that is stopping Iranian money laundering and sanctions busting on behalf of Putin. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.